I grew up in Evansburg, Pennsylvania. I grew up on a farm. My dad had a dairy farm. He was at work every day and kind of just showed us what work ethic was like and, and sports wasn't you know, a, a part of our life you know, growing up at a real, real young age, but it was just um, you know, him getting up every single day, going to work, and, and he loved what he did. My older brother, John, was kind of my role model growing up. He was two years older than me. We pretty much did everything together. Got into wrestling, I was in second grade. There's a worker on the farm at the time that was into wrestling, you know, pretty big time, and, and he, he talked my dad into taking me and my brother to practice, and we loved it. In high school, my sophomore year, I made it to the state tournament the first time. Junior year, I got third, and my senior year, I finally won it. I wanted to wrestle and win in high school, and then Pitt Johnson had just won a Division II national title. Uh, it was a very exciting time for UPJ, so I, I felt like you know, it was really close to my home. Having my brother there, it's just a great fit for me. In my sophomore year, I won 125, John won 133, and then our team won the team, you know, Division II national title. It was a really, really special year. I was always a huge fan of Iowa wrestling growing up, and, you know, from Pennsylvania and in the Gable era and what he was accomplishing at the time. You know, after my sophomore year, uh, me and my coach talked and he thought it was a great opportunity for me. So I went out there immediately in the summer. It, it was great, the, the atmosphere, the intensity, everything. It was, it was everything that I dreamt of. Um, you know, I was 125, Eric Jurgens 133. We had a, a lot of really good guys on the team. My first year at Iowa, I was the number one seed in the NCAA tournament. I had beat you know, the wrestler from Penn State in a great match at the Big Ten Finals and then got the NCAAs. I tweaked my knee, I think maybe my second match, something like that. And then I had a real, real you know, tough road back. Then my senior year, won another Big Ten title, got to the NCAA tournament, made it to the finals, and I wrestled a good match. And I think the final score was 13-10. I started to come back maybe a little bit at the end, but just gave up too much too early. At the time of losing an NCAA Finals match your senior year, you don't have another shot to do it. That is the goal, that is the pinnacle of, of NCAA wrestling, and that's why I transferred to the University of Iowa to win an NCAA team individual title. So it, it was everything at the time, but you know, sometimes it doesn't happen that way. Those final matches are they're something I still think about, you know, the finals match and, and the loss, but I think they, may, they motivate me now to be a better coach, you know, going through that. that just tough times where you really got to become a man and, and look yourself in the mirror and say, you know, I can't win it now, but I'm going to do everything I can to, to be the best coach, father, husband that I can be. We are live from the fifth annual Who's Number One Campus of Lehigh University. Okay, up with it, up with it, up with it. Up, up, up. No, 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 nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing here, nothing. Go back behind, back behind. Hey, Gavin, hey, keep it up. Gavin, look at me. You gotta change the double legs quick, okay? Get the two legs right away. Eric Jurgens and I got offered a job a year after I graduated uh, to start a wrestling club, and we took it. We moved to Michigan, and first practice, it was probably 10 kids, something like that. We were in a karate studio, and we got a couple mats, and we rolled them out, and we are expecting a big turnout, and um, you know, there's 10 kids, and, and it just grew, you know? Practice by practice, it started slow, and you know I think by the time we left, we had a couple different sites, and you know it was up to 50, 60 kids, something like that, at each site. My elbow hits the mat. Now I come through. Okay, so anything you want from a front headlock, again the same pace though. Faking, snapping, get them under you. Right, get your hands on them, get him moving, pull them down, going from a front headlock any way you want. Right, go. I absolutely love the club wrestling and you know and, and what we were doing and helping the kids who really really wanted to get better but I didn't like where I was and it's, it was nothing against Michigan it was just that I wasn't home so we started Young Guns in Pennsylvania and then it just kind of grew as you know the kids started getting better and developing you know, we were having success state level you know and, and getting kids to, to place at state tournament to me that's what young guns is it's about getting this kid to this level you know and hey a kid might come first year and you get him to the next level you know if a kid is a uh, you know a spencer lee and world champion you're trying to get him to the next level when he's at practice it's easy you know he wants to show you how good he is but as a coach how do i get him to think that whenever he's leaving and i think that's very very important you know some kids think that just two hours of practice is two hours of the day. Well, 
you know, and what's the other 22 hours like? You know, whenever you start getting a kid to think the right way 24 hours a day, that's when you have a really, really special kid. Kids like AJ Shop, it was a big part of that, the early years. There's just been so many kids over the years who have get, get to know really well. It's been fun. Beautiful job and another takedown. Take down. First takedown of the match for Noel. 3 0 here in the second. Jason Noel, he, he's always been special, but I think he really hit a new level his sophomore year. His freshman year in the finals, he won an ultimate ride out. Then his sophomore year, he ended up with a loss, you know, and that really changed him. You saw him that offseason, just a different kid. He was on a mission. Get in a new position, learn this position, get in a new position, learn it. And so he wasn't afraid to ever, you know, really open up and just let it fly. And you see that now with his creativity when, when he wrestles. I guess whenever I found out that Kemmer was gonna go up to, to 57, you know, it was talk of, maybe, is there gonna be a wrestle off or not? You know, there wasn't a whole lot of talk about Mikey yet. And then he started having a big win, have another big win, have another big win. Next thing you know, he's in the top 10, then he's in the top five. Now he's, you know, right up there and you're like, wow, this is gonna be a crazy match. And you talk about two kids who just did so much for a program of young guns that I'll be forever thankful for, you know? What incredible kids and, and role models. So everyone was talking about it all week, especially within the club, you know, it was just a huge hyped up match. And it was just like, I can't wait for it, but I can't wait for it to be over, you know? Oh, beautiful attack again, go! That's Kemmer in trouble and still no point. It was like stressful because you didn't want one to win or one to lose, um, but you know that's going to happen in a wrestling match. So it was, you know, it was extremely hard to watch. But at the same time, you're proud. I mean, what, what an amazing opportunity for for both of those, you know, young men to, to go out there and wrestle in the stage that they wrestle in. So. Teasdale, I, I was very, I guess, surprised maybe whenever he committed so early his sophomore year. I mean, maybe he was just a, a little bit too young. I'm not sure, you know, what all went into that. But, you know, the kids, I let them do their thing, you know. Whatever they want to do is what they're going to do. After his junior year, he went to the NCAA tournament. And then we came back, you know, I get out of practice one night and, you know, I see the decommitment from a tweet. It's not like I was upset. I wasn't, you know, I'm even totally shocked. He has a lot of great friends on the Penn State team. And I was just, um, I guess I was surprised whenever I saw the, the, the tweet. You know, I, so I called Gavin, I, I wasn't happy, and it wasn't about where he was going. Again, I, I want the kids going where they're happy. And it was maybe a growing moment for Gavin, you know, to grow up, like, um, to say, hey, coach, you know, I, I don't want to do this behind your back. I, this is the reasons, and, and I am super happy for him. You know, any of the, these kids, they're, they're going to these programs and getting a scholarship, I, I'm, I'm extremely happy for them. High, high pace, this last two minutes. Got to hustle here. Hey, you got to keep moving. I was very lucky as an athlete to be surrounded by coaches who cared and cared about everything that you were about and wanting to, to accomplish. Um, so I, I think that I was very lucky that way and trying to, you know, just pass on what I was taught. Um, but it's a, it's a still a learning process. There's still kids you like, man, I'm having a hard time figuring him out. And, you know, what really makes him tick? It's always, I guess, new, th new challenges. I think the goal going forward is just to, to keep helping kids. You know, what I'm most proud of is that the reputation that the, that the Young Guns kids have you know, left for, the, the kids coming up and they've left that tradition of, you know, that you can be an absolute hammer on the mat and still get good grades and still be respectful to your parents and still be good kids in school and, and still, when it's time that whistle blows, you're trying to rip someone's head off.